What's up? What's the weatherman here? And there might be a better man near because it's two members of Team 6K in the building. What's up, Undead? What's up, weatherman? Welcome back to Team 6K, guys, and welcome to our first episode of Fix Your Deck. Today's deck is sent in by Hatim Barmal on Twitter. And he wants us to take a look at his Yosinju Pendulum deck. First, let's take a look at what this deck is doing well, and then we can talk about how to make it better. We aren't given a guide for how to play the deck here, but for those that don't know the general game plan of this, deck, the Yosenju Pendulum deck is basically an overwhelming OTK deck. They Pendulum summon out their two boss monsters and get their attacks super high, go for game, and the strategy is supported by some protective effects to allow them to do these things without having to care too much about interruption. Diebot, when Pendulum Summon, prevents your opponent from negating its summon, so they can't use a Stardust Warrior, can't use a Steel Swarm Roach, can't use a TG Halberd Cannon. Cards which the opponent might have decided to summon, seeing that you were playing a Pendulum deck. Also, one of their scales, Shinshu L can destroy itself as a replacement effect to protect one or more of your Yusinjus from battle or effect destruction. So there's a solid chance that as long as you can get your playoff, you're probably going to be OTK for a lot of damage. Hitot or High Tot, I never know how to pronounce these cards, boosting your board up. And both High Tot and Diabok removing your opponent's cards to clear the way for your monsters to hit your opponent right in the jaw for game. They also have a fantastic consistency card, Channeling, that sets up your scales all by itself and can also search for your boss monsters to get that pendulum summon going. And the card isn't even a once per turn, so you could search a boss monster and get your scale set up if you have two. This guy is also playing life point boost alpha. It's nice to help you stay alive, but in this deck it also works alongside card of the soul to search for Hitot, as its attack and defense added together equal 5k. And since this is an OTK deck 100%, it doesn't really have any going first capabilities, so it stocks up on a bunch of protective battle hand traps. Kyroid and battle and boxer veil can turn off two attacks by themselves each, and you send you OEM can turn off all attacks against most decks, although the search spell can't be used if you have OEM on the field, so that has to be kept in mind. It seems like this guy's filled his extra deck with whatever rank fours he has. I'm sure he knows that he's not really going to be going into his extra deck, but it is good that he's filling it up regardless. You don't want your opponent to know that you don't care about the extra deck. The less information we give our opponent for free, the better. This guy is also playing Jar of Greed. He can set them turn one to potentially bait out some back row uh, removal by their opponent and even be able to dig a little deeper into his deck for combo pieces. Honestly, the deck is mostly well built. Every card in the deck is focused on achieving the same goal. The ratios seem pretty solid. The deck is consistent. The deck's impact cards are selected with the deck's game plan in mind. Overall, it's a pretty solid build. I'm not saying it's the best archetype in the game or anything, but for what it is worth, he did do a good job. That said, there are some pointers we have on how we can make this even better than it is. First of all, for consistency reasons, we're going to need to bump dieback and channeling to three copies each. We want to see these cards all day, every day, and they are good in multiples in our hand too, since you can use multiples of them in a turn. If you want to see a card in our hand, or if a card is unsearchable, then of course, we usually want to play three copies of that card so we can get what we need as much as possible. Secondly, the life point boost alpha and card of soul combo is definitely cool. However, it only searches for high tot and that might be an issue as if you happen to top deck into card of soul when your life points have already dropped below 5,000, it's a good chance it's just gonna be a dead card in your hand. So you could either play one copy of it or you could just stop playing it all together and start using the Neo New Silvio skill. This skill is actually insane for this version of the deck as you can use it if your life points have decreased by 2,000, which you can allow to activate safely as long as you have a Kyroid or a Battle Boxer Veil in your hand. It lets you shuffle a Yosinju card from your hand to the deck to add a free Yosinju channel into your hand from outside of the deck. And the fact that this skill doesn't replace the card that you draw on your draw phase, but instead lets you choose which card you're getting from your hand to turn into Channeler is amazing. Often you can use this to essentially turn one Yosinju card from your hand into two scales on the field, or you can turn one low level Yosinju from your hand into a high level Yosinju by replacing the low level with channeling, then using the channeling to search for one of your boss monsters. The fact that channeling isn't even once per turn also makes this even better, as if if you already have channeling in your hand because you activated the skill, you can use one to set up your scales and the other to get whatever boss you need for the situation. Your Senju OEM is definitely going to be one that's up to personal preference, the amount of it that you play. It summons itself from hand by discarding a Yusenju whenever the opponent declares a direct attack. Then if the opponent battles it, then its attack and defense become equal to that monster's attack. If you summon this in defense, then every time the opponent attacks it, it will just match the opponent's attack and it won't be destroyed in battle. The unfortunate thing is though, that if you want to use channeling, it requires you to control 
no monsters, and if this is still on the field, that means you'll have a monster on the field. You could circumvent this by choosing not to activate the effect to match their attack when their final monster attacks this card. However, if the opponent knows how you Senju's work, they might let you keep the OEM, or they might not attack it at all because they believe that you'll activate it and it'll be a useless battle. If they do destroy it by battle though, you can search any your Senju card, including a copy of Channeling. If you wanted to play one of this, we would understand. If you wanted to play two of this, we would understand. Even if you wanted to play three, we would understand too, because even though it conflicts with Channeling, it is a very good protective card to help us survive if we went first. For us though, we would play one copy of it, as it is searchable by Channeling itself, even if we don't want to have it all the time. Jar of Greed is the last card to talk about. This is definitely another topic that might possibly be up to personal opinion. If your deck is more than 20 cards and some of the cards in that deck only have the effect to draw a single card, it could be seen as redundant because by taking those cards out of your deck, you'll have the exact same amount of consistency. And since Jar of Greed is a trap card and this is the OTK deck, top deck in this might be pretty annoying to be honest. If all you need is a monster to win the game as you won't be able to activate the Jar of Greed right away. That said though, this is a pendulum deck and pendulum decks are famously hurt by back or removal as if you can remove a pendulum scale it'll make it harder for them to pendulum summon and you'll need to use another scale and that scale could have been better used as one of the cards you would have been pendulum summoning jar agreed could be set turn one just to bait out the opponent's back or removal for you to chain jar to draw one extra card and lose no card advantage and the card you drew could be kyroid or battle box reveal or another combo piece to help you kill the opponent this is a very creative way of dealing with one of the downsides of a pendulum deck especially an otk pendulum deck like this that said though the card is only good for going first. It isn't good going second. For this reason, even though it may not hit the right cards, we recommend playing hard back or removal to get rid of your opponent's back or removal, either when they use it to get rid of your face down back or removal, or when you just activate it from your hand to get rid of their face down back or removal. And this way, you'll have the added benefit of being able to remove other problematic back row to make your pendulum summon more successful. The best back or removal card we can suggest is Cosmic Cyclone. However, if you do not own that, you could run Spiritualism, but Cosmic would be better since you can use it on the opponent's turn. You might even be able to use it to stop your opponent from pendulum summoning in the first place. And also it can allow you to activate your skill more easily by fulfilling half of its condition. A thousand of your life points will be lost and you'll only need to lose a thousand more. The extra deck really isn't that deep because as we are aware, and as you are aware, we aren't really gonna go into the extra deck that much anyway, as many of the cards lock us into the archetype. And even if that weren't the case, it is often better just to use monsters as they are and really we'll never be able to summon a rank 10 xc's because in order to summon them we need pendulum summon and in order to pendulum summon we need to use our scale effects to boost one of our scales to a scale 11 and those effects all lock us into your senjus anyway however on the rare occasion that you might be able to go for a rank 4 there are some good cards you might like to consider investing in and there are also good in other rank 4 decks dark requiem xc's dragon number 106 giant hand abyss dweller number 39 utopia but only if you are using it alongside number c39 Utopia Ray and or number S39 Utopia the Lightning, Lightning Chidori, number 70 Malevolent Sin, Steel Swarm Roach, Diamond Direwolf, and number 27 Dreadnought Dreadnought, but only if you're using Super Quantal Mech King Great Magnus as a target for it. Of course, you can play whatever you have of these and there will be good options for you. If you just so happen to be going into a rank 4, having options that can help you in a variety of situations is going to be super helpful, even if unlikely. Here is a deck list that is like yours, but incorporates all the tips that we gave in this video. Don't stress too heavily about the extra deck, as of course it won't even be relevant the majority of the time. If you don't have all the cards here, of course you can just work towards them and still play your deck as it is until you gradually have all of the main deck cards here. We sincerely hope that this helps you get more dubs with the deck. It is a very cool strategy and it is awesome to see that you're interested in playing it even better than you likely already are. Thank you everyone for watching the first episode of our new series, Fix Your Deck, where Weatherman and Undead put you on the right path to making your deck the best it can be. Big thank you to Hatim for submitting and if you guys want your deck to be fixed, all you have to do is follow Weatherman at Team6KWeather on Twitter. Tweet a screenshot of your deck list and say a little something about what you want to achieve with it and be sure to include the hashtag 6KFixK so that we are able to see the tweet. That's 6KFixK. Make sure to include it, otherwise we won't be able to search for it. But yeah guys, we hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to take that like button, caress it lightly, make it feel safe, let it open up its heart to you. 
then absolutely smash the ever licking heck out of the like button. Subscribe if you like our content. For that matter, subscribe if you don't like our content and you want to be there to see our downfall. Hit the bell to get notified every time we put a new video up. Thanks for watching, guys. I've been Undead. I've been Weatherman. Team 6K, 6K out. out. Wait, hey, I feel like the greatest. Okay. Now I feel like they hate it. Okay. Now I feel like the only one and there is no debating. Okay. Man, I feel like they leaving. Now I feel like they waited. Now I feel like this is the feeling before I can make it. Before I hit the stage, I just feel like I'm nauseous. Or I feel like I'm popping. Or I feel like a boss is. Maybe I'm feeling off it. Or I feel like I'm toxic. Maybe feeling intoxicated is the reason for all this. I want to whip it with the top down dog like I'm Earth Gang. Told him, listen, wild day shine like my first name. Told me go and grab a titty boy. It's my first chain. I ain't even switch gears yet. It's the first lane. The first pain I ever felt was the worst pain. And church came. And that feeling of hurt came. And her name made this feeling all worth pain. She made me realize what I had felt in the first place.